everybody. Ash here from uh, Quantify Performance. What we're we'll talking about tonight is the shot process. I know I've been talking about the shot process for five years or so, um, but what we're going to do tonight is we're going to get deep into it. So let's talk about the shot process first. If I was needed to fire this gun, first off, clear gun, no rounds, empty chamber, bolts locked to the rear, right? So if I needed to fire this gun, other than loading it, okay? I know that you got to load the gun to sure shoot it. So what I need to do is I need to grab the gun. I need to get into a stable enough position to aim the gun, right? So however that looks, get on the gun. I need to aim the gun. Once I aim the gun, press the trigger, see if I get the effect that I want. That's the basic shot process, right? That's a little four step shot process. That's about as far as people get though. So what I want to do tonight is I want to go deep down into it. Now, the reason that you need to go deep down into your shot process at least once or twice, and you need to write down every step, and I know this is a pain in the ass, but get the gun out, your gun of choice, whether it's the you know pistol, rifle, whatever it is, gun of choice, get into that basic thing, get into and do basically a complete shot. Obviously, you know, be safe about it, but do a complete shot and think about every little tiny step in there and then write it down. You can do it on a video, it doesn't matter. Just get every little step log down because what we're trying to do is we're trying to get if it takes you 35 steps like my buddy to do a uh, to do the perfect shot now we're talking about the perfect shot we're not just talking about a shot we're talking about the, the perfect shot if it's a 30 step process to get you there what you need to do is you need to get that 30 steps and we're going to start combining it in you know steps together but you got to get them all out there so you can kind of combine them in their right spot to where you can do that consistency consistently all right just talking about doing something is different than doing something and doing it at the right time okay uh, so one, one of the steps that i remember in that in, in my buddy's process is he right before he fired the shot basically he set up everything with a slight cant to the gun Right, so the gun was tilted a little bit. And then the final thing that he did was he pressured his hand until it was level. And he put pressure on the palm of his hand and he basically leveled the gun out as his last step in the process, right? If he was able to do that and everything locked in and felt right, he was able to do that perfect shot, okay? So if I just told you to do that and that make, make sure you get everything cranked in there and you just started doing that and you're doing it at the wrong time, you might not get the full effect, right? So that's why you need to get it broke down as far deep as possible, right? So then we can start combining things, we can start doing things at the same time, which in turn shortens that shot process, right? If I've got, you know, 40 minutes to fire that, or if you're doing F class and you got 20 minutes to fire 10 rounds, uh, you've got a lot of time for that shot process, right? You've got a full minute to cycle through everything in there, right? But you get to get to a quantified performance match and you've got 90 seconds to shoot six targets you don't have that full amount of time so you need to be able to do but you need to do that perfect shot right so when you do that perfect shot and you can get all your steps in your process shot process in there and you can get that done in about five to six seconds for that shot something that you can take 50 seconds to do but you can do all those steps in five that's what we're trying to get to right and for the for the tactical guys and the, and the dudes like that you you need to be able to do this on demand right so if i'm a law enforcement officer and the, and the gun comes out of holster for whatever reason i need to be able to do that perfect shot by the time that the pistol comes out here right or as close to that as possible so doing that consistent shot process having that process written down start combining steps making sure you're hitting every step in your practice then you're gonna have a shot process that is basically bulletproof and you're gonna be able to do those things, right? Guys like Tyler and Jeff, they've got their shot process down and they're doing that process the same way every time, right? That's why they're getting trophies and other people are not, right? So let's break it down, all right? So basically I have to grab the gun first, right? And everybody was mad when the, when the book came out and we didn't talk about, you know, all these things and firing hand grip, non-firing hand grip, all that sort of stuff, right? So let's start with firing hand grip. I'm going to come as high in here. Now, some people like to do this grip. I'm not a big fan of that grip. It's entirely up to you. I don't care which grip you use, but you need to grip the gun, right? So I like to come up high. My thumb goes on to the safety, 
right? So no matter what I'm doing, the first thing that I'm doing when I'm grabbing this gun, this is the first thing that's happening, regardless. It's the first thing that's happening with a pistol, and it's the first thing that's happening with the rifle, as I'm establishing the fire, firing hand grip or the master grip, okay? So I'm coming up high. I don't have a death grip on it. I have a grip though, right? So I, I do have control of the gun here, right? Thumb is on top of the safety, finger is out here, not pushing on the magazine release, but the finger is indexed along the frame. This works for any type of pattern rifle, you know, safety might be in a different spot, but it works for there, right? Now what I'm gonna be trying to do is I'm not worried about this hand yet, okay? So what I'm trying to do is I'm shooting this rifle, this is what I have right here, this is what we're gonna be focused on. So what I'm trying to do, and the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start mounting it to where I can start aiming, okay? So remember I said before that I'm trying to get stable enough to aim. That's all the stability that I need, okay? Because all the rest of the stuff, the recoil management, all that stuff is after the shot, after the bullets already left the muzzle. So it's not what I need for that shot, it's for the next shot, right? But we're gonna get there now. So as I'm coming in here, I'm establishing this grip and we'll, we'll just say that for this, I'm gonna be shooting the gun rather rapidly. So I'm coming in here, I'm getting the pocket of my shoulder. That's my next step, right? But my eyes are on target. So as I'm coming here, I'm looking at the target and I'm starting to reference off the top of this rail. And if you have a red dot there, that's a really good spot to put it. But I'm starting to reference that target off of this, off this rail as I'm coming in. But the main focus is getting this into the pocket of my shoulder. Right now I'm going to start coming in. I'm going to establish my cheek to stock. Okay. Now this hand, you notice it started to go out because I've been working this. This hand is going to basically, you know, people call it a reaction hand. They call it your other strong hand, whatever. This hand is going to be getting into a spot where I can get control of the rifle. Okay. So as I'm doing this, it comes up, I'm going for the butt stock. I'm starting to reference the target. This hand comes out. I may need it here to push the bolt release, but I happen to have a knight's gun that has ambi, so I'm not too concerned with that. I can have it there though, and I'm coming out, and I'm basically gonna find a spot, right? This tripod has a big knob right here. The scope is rather large, so I don't, can't put my hand where I normally will put it. So I'm probably gonna come right in here and get a hold of this tripod, okay? Because that's where I'm starting to feel some movement right there, is with the tripod, I put a little pressure down on the, on the neck, right? So I come in here, then I establish my cheek to stock. Now all this is happening, as I'm going towards the gun, but my focus is here, here, down the, down the scope, onto the reticle. This hand starts moving to get control of the gun, right? So basically right now I'm more comfortable right here on this gun. So that's when I establish my non-firing hand grip, okay? Sometimes I might be on the back. Sometimes I might be here. Sometimes I might be out here. Sometimes I might be here. I might be holding it on the barricade. I might be doing a lot of things. This hand is stability building, right? That's what I'm trying to do. So until I'm on this gun, this hand really doesn't know what to do because it doesn't know where the stability needs to go, right? So once I'm here and I'm here and I'm building that stability, I'm getting it, now I'm focused on aim. Now this whole time that I've been here while this hand's doing whatever, I'm dropping bolt, doing whatever, I've been doing a macro aim. Okay, I've been getting the sight, general vicinity of the target, right? Now, when I say general vicinity, a lot of times I like to go to center. I just center on the scope. Now, I know that I'm going to be doing a hold or I'm going to be doing a wind or I'm going to be doing something, whatever. But if I get it to the center of the scope, I've seen that reticle enough times that I know where that is in the reticle. If I try to go straight to that, I might have something weird. So if I drive that center straight to the target, as I'm doing this part, as I'm coming in here and I drive straight to the target, then all I have to do is apply my hold, okay? Generally, you know, that, that's generally pretty much how I do it. But so I've started macro aiming. Then once I'm stable, then I can get into the micro aiming. Now when I talk about micro aiming, I'm talking about whatever that hold is. So we're just gonna say it's a uh, 2.4 mil with one wind dot, this has got trimmer three in it. So with one wind dot, right? We're not talking about a two-ish hold. We're not talking about a center hold. We're not talking about whatever. I'm talk looking for 2.4, right? So I'm gonna go 2.4, and then I'm gonna go to that second wind dot, wherever it lands on that wind dot, okay? It might be at the top of the dot, might be at the bottom of the dot, might be wherever, it might be a center of the dot. It just depends on where that 2.4 crosses that dot, 
where that 2.4 crosses that dot is the aiming point. The rest of the reticle is unimportant, right? That little spot right there, so if this is my dot, and this is where 2.4 crosses it, right at that top knuckle, that right there is where I'm aiming, okay? I'm gonna talk about stability enough to aim. In this process, as I've got there, I've got stable enough to hold 2.4 on top of that dot, okay? So this hand doing what this hand needs to do, and it could be feet, could be wherever, right? That's all leading up to it, right? Now, if you notice, but well, I'll, I'll come in like I'm getting ready to do the shot for real, still clear gun. I'm coming in and I'm here and I'm on the target. Once I get to where I'm fairly close to a fine aim, I'm shooting like from the tripod or whatever, when I'm really close to that fine aim, that micro aim, I drop the bolt. The reason that I do that is because the gun moves, right? So if I'm not stable at that point, the gun has just told me that and I haven't had to waste a bullet, right? When I drop that bolt and it does that and the gun moves around, I get to check my stability of that position, right? Even prior to, so I've dropped the bolt. I noticed my position was not quite right. Worked on my stability a little bit more, got to my 2.4 hold, safety. Now the objective of when you're doing this, the objective is to release the trigger or the hammer goes or you press the trigger or you do whatever, right? And the hammer goes and you're firing around without disturbing the aim. And when we're talking about not disturbing the aim, we're talking about not bringing it off of that knuckle, okay? We're talking about with our aiming point on that wind dot, not coming off of there when I press the trigger, right? So even that small amount of safety, if I'm not stable, it's going to show, right? So even there, I fix it, 2.4 on the second wind dot, drop the shot, okay? All those steps, everything that I was doing in there, and that's not even getting into the mental side, which we're gonna hit in a second, but all of those steps is everything that I needed to do to do a perfect shot, okay? That's going from, if I have the red dot here, and for competition, I generally have a red dot, something up here, aiming from the red dot, going to the, the, the macro aim, going to the micro aim, getting the stability, making sure that I have that aim. Now, a couple things that I missed in there. Once I was here, I didn't talk about checking my level, right? So in that macro aim portion, I'm checking my level just really quick. This is a nice big old nice level, and I'm just looking down and checking it and coming back up. That's all I'm doing. I'm not spending 20 minutes on it. I'm just making sure that I'm, I'm there, it's in between the lines, and I'm good to go, okay? So this is why we write it down. I didn't write it down, I should have. Should have done a little bit more prep for this video, but you write it down, you have every step and you're like, okay, you know, firing hand grip, firing hand grip, thumb on safety, butt stock and shoulder, cheeks start starting to come down. I'm checking my, my gross aim, I'm checking my macro aim. This hand is getting stable, I'm doing my micro aim, I'm dropping the bolt, all of those things that written down and I just do it, choo, 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 go through it. Right, so, but what you can get to, right, basically what I'm doing, gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna do, do this shot, how we would be doing it at speed, right? So the gun is here, bolts back, we'll pretend there's a magazine in there, right? So I'm doing whatever, my little stage has me come up. I'm coming up, this is here, you notice how I started coming in to the gun, I know I'm going here. Right, so I'm already looking at the target. I'm starting to go there. I'm seeing where he is in reference to that target. This hand is coming up, coming up here. You can see there, I got some stability started. Drop the bolt, safety, fire. So we'll call that, I don't know, six, seven seconds, whatever. But I hit all of those things that I talked about, except for the bubble level. I did it, but I didn't talk about it. So if I practice that every time, let's say I forgot the bubble level, I'm just be like, man, I'm checking my notes and be like, ah, I didn't do the level, right? So come back here, right? Do the whole process up to there, pause, check my bubble level right here. Come back off, just go to that spot, right? Come back in, bubble level, sight, right? Come back in, bubble level, sight. And we're doing that. Then once I get there, when I'm coming in and then just let it go, boom, bubble level sight, then I move on, right? 
and I move through that process. Now, if I'm doing that and I'm practicing that, what I'm gonna be doing is every time that I come up here, I'm gonna go, bam, drop bolt, already checked my level, boom, sight, phew, shot, okay? Not saying it's gonna be the perfect shot, but there's some things that happen in there, right? That's in the pre-shot level. How did I know it was 2.4? I knew it was 2.4 because I just made that shit up. But how I would know that is 2.4 is I have my data. So I'm gonna have that before I go to shoot this gun, right? So that's some pre-stuff over here. Now, talking about the mental, okay? Because I think I made my point about getting every step in there, right? Talking about the mental stuff. Visualization is something that professional athletes do, okay? If you're getting paid to shoot guns, you're a professional athlete. If you're an army dude, you're a professional athlete, okay? If you're getting paid for it, technically, you're a professional, right? So you may not be at the, at the level and you say professional athlete and people think about all-star NFL football players, da 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 If you're in the army, or you have been in the army, you're top 1% of the population, okay? That's, that's pretty elite athlete right there. So, take it for what it is, everybody uses visualization, right? So when you're visualizing, you know, and dry fire, everybody says dry fire is king, but dry fire is part of the, 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 the system, okay? Talk about visual, visualization, okay? You can do your shot process. I don't need this gun. I don't need a gun. I don't even need to be awake. Well, you need to be kind of awake. But I don't have to be any sort of, I don't have to get dressed up. I don't have to put on tactical Kimmy gear. I don't have to do anything because I can visualize doing that shot process any time that I want. I'm sitting there and I'm watching a commercial on the TV. Commercial pops up. I can do a shot, right? I can be sitting there waiting for, you know, whatever. I can do a shot. Rather than checking that gram, I can do a shot, okay? So you're visualizing that. Now, when I'm here getting ready and on, you're like, shooter's on deck, you know, Ash is on deck, Jack's shooting, and Ash is on deck. While I'm on deck, what am I doing? I'm visualizing that stage. I'm going through that stage. I need to go here. I need to get the gun here. I need to get the bag here. And once I get there, I'm starting into my shot process. My holds are this. On this target, my holds are this. On this target, I'm going through that stage in my head. And I'm visualizing it. And I'm visualizing the entire shot process. Boom. Moving to 2.8. Boom. Moving to 3.4. Boom. Got wind. Wind shifting here. I'm going through all that in my head. Okay. Right before it's my time, I put my gun up in there and I put my magazine in, bolt back. Everything's all set. Just shot process. Not the stage just the shot process because what do you need to do that stage you need the perfect shot okay so if i run through that shot process one time burn it then are you shooter ready we always ask that right shooter ready so when i'm here do that shot if, if he's like shooter ready and i'm not finished with my shot yet i'm not ready you don't have to be ready when that dude says ready, and it ROs if you're watching this. They don't have to be ready when you decide they're ready. They're ready when they're ready. Okay, so I'm here, and I'm halfway through my shot. Shooter ready. Finish my shot. Set up. Got everything that is in my brain. I've got my whole thing. I just played it in my head. I know what I'm doing. Now I'm ready. Okay, nod your head, flip them off, do whatever it is you do. That, that, that's funny, by the way. Everybody try that at least once. When they say shooter ready, you know, it's that stage that you don't like, you know, sad panda, you guys are not going to like that one, but I encourage you guys when the RO says shooter ready, yeah, give them the bird. I'm ready, All right? I'm ready. Beep. Go in, do my shot, go through my shot process, right? Doing it at the match is not going to help you. Okay. Learning your shot process at the match. If you start on that today, once you see this video, tomorrow, whatever it is, when you see this video, you start doing that, guess what's gonna happen if you show up to the match in October? You're gonna have your shot process locked in. It's gonna be there. It's gonna, it's gonna be there for you. Then all you're worried about is wind, okay? Wind and recoil, because that's the only thing that we're not getting right now. Because I can tell you, I can give you a range, you can make up random ranges, you can go and there's a little app that'll just show up, just show random numbers. 
and you got data for it, you can be, be like, you can, you can have, your, have your buddy, text your buddy and be like, hey man, send me, send me a range in, a, in 30 seconds randomly. And he sends you a range, a text message comes back. You can do it on Facebook. And the range comes back, 332, right? And I know a 300, I don't know my data right off the top, off the top of my head, but I know a 300 is like 1.1 on this gun, so I just call it 1.3 and I'm gonna send it, right? Don't know nothing about the wind. So the wind and recoil, because if I do that and I'm like, I'm gonna come in here and pow, do my shot. Then basically I do that. I don't have wind because I didn't do it. You know, and you can make up a wind call. You can do that too. You can work your data for the wind, um, but I'm not gonna get recoil. No matter what I do, you can't visualize recoil, okay? But up until that point, the more you do that, the more you take the time, write down that shot process. I'm telling you, take the time, write it down. Get in there. Get it deep, get it locked in, see what you can tie together, see what I can do at the same time, right? So I can be, you know, doing whatever, same time if I can combine those things at, at this point, I'm doing this. So we'll talk about grip and shoulder, right? So if I start working that at the same time, instead of going boom, boom, I came in at the same time, boom, this hand's starting to go out, boom, because I practice this, I know now that I need to grab it out here start doing that okay you're going to be better off right so i'll stop rambling i encourage you guys to do that as your shot process telling you it's important and uh then we'll start working on the visual stuff later